You may recall my Dell Latitude E6500 laptop being featured in a video on my channel. This is the Latitude E6500 which was featured in that video. Unfortunately it's no longer one for this world. Uh, the bezel has broken, at uh, least of our concerns. The screen has also broken. You might be able to see the fracture there. This took such a jolt that uh, the keyboard is bowing upward in the center. Uh, it loosened and dislodged this uh, this piece right there. Closing the laptop, it's pretty obvious that the whole screen is bent out of shape. This section right here was what made primary contact with the concrete. So when this happened, I was in dire need of a replacement with little time to spare when I placed the order for this machine. Uh, usually if the price is agreeable, um, or you know it's a once in a blue moon type of deal, I end up buying two machines that are the exact same configuration. Buying two computers in the exact same configura hardware configuration, what that will allow you to do is if something goes wrong with the primary one, well you can just simply flip it around, remove the hard drive, which is what I did, and put it into the secondary machine, and now you have a ready-to-go drop-in replacement for your no longer functioning broken machine. I opted to upgrade this machine to uh, Windows 10 Professional. Necessity is the mother of invention, as they say. That certainly rings true here. Needed to shed a little more light on the subject at hand. This machine is running Windows 10 Professional because originally before the Windows 10 upgrade, uh, this machine was actually running Windows 7 Professional. It was activated and my understanding is that as long as it's a legitimate activated version of Windows 7, uh, no matter the version, uh, you're still technically eligible for a free Windows 10 upgrade offer. How long Microsoft will continue to offer that now with Windows 7 being out of support remains to be seen. My understanding as it is, is that this machine can be upgraded to a maximum of 8 gigabytes of RAM, something I'm definitely intending to do in the very near future, uh, just to re-enliven it. And I also have every intention of upgrading the hard drive on this laptop to an SSD, which should definitely make an eminent improvement in response especially when you take into consideration that the hard drive it originally came with is a Western Digital Scorpio Blue but it's only a 5400 RPM drive so this is the one that was in the broken machine this exact same hard drive just a different one is in this machine and so definitely this not being you know a high-speed drive a 7200 RPM drive definitely begins to show its shortcomings on a newer operating system. I also was tempted to install Classic Shell as I have with previous Windows 8.1 and Windows 8 installations to restore the uh, classic uh, more familiar start menu uh, from Windows Vista and Windows 7. Through some tinkering around with the Windows 10 built-in start menu I'm tempted to just leave it as is. I removed all of the pin tiles and the live tiles that like to advertise for like the Microsoft Store and uh, the new version of Microsoft Office. I disabled all that and unpinned all of them. Believe it or not, Windows 10 actually has a hidden power plan, one that's aimed for the ultimate in performance for gamers and the like, but it's not enabled by default. I was able to enable it using Command Prompt, and a little trick that I learned that uh, makes navigating through the new Windows 10 layout and getting back to what I would call legacy Windows 7 features and utilities that's been a godsend so far is to just press Windows key X on the home desktop screen and you're given an option here to access pretty much everything you'd ever want to you know your power options, network connections, your computer management, command prompt as an administrator something I also did to protect uh, my privacy from the get-go it's been well documented about the telemetry I went ahead and took the liberty to disable Cortana through the group policy editor And I also took the opportunity to disable the lock screen in Windows 10, which is that thing that shows you the uh, the time and that if you were to have a touch screen would require you to swipe up to dismiss it before you can log on. So now if I lock the computer, I'm greeted with the log on prompt requesting my password. No more do I have to be bothered by that frivolous um, lock screen that shows you the time. And with all that talk of disabling things in the group policy editor, I figure it's more than appropriate now to discuss uh, securing one's privacy in Windows 10. And I'll spare everybody the details, 
and lengthy explanations, but suffice it to say that I went through everything in privacy and turned off all the relevant details. Um, I don't know why online speech recognition is turned back on. I turned that off actually uh, during initial installation. So I, I honestly think that uh, what people were suggesting, uh, that is when Windows 10 automatically updates, it resets your privacy settings. I certainly believe that to be true because that was definitely off. Something else that I've noticed that uh, I don't really want to describe or classify as a glitch, but I'm really tempted to, is it seems that every reboot, the... Uh, this driver is disabled, along with this PCI to PCI bridge. I'm not too sure why that keeps getting disabled, unless it's some kind of a hardware conflict or a problem with the driver that uh, Windows 10 is automatically disabling for my safety and protection. Getting this computer to operate correctly was a bit of an interesting chore in and of itself. By that I mean trying to find drivers that would actually work and run properly under Windows 10. A number of them actually need to be run in compatibility mode for either Windows Vista or Windows 7. And the three that uh, provided me with the biggest challenge of trying to get to operate and install correctly were the graphics driver, the audio driver, and the rapid storage technology by Intel driver. Now these two drivers up top, graphics and the audio, go without saying that they're necessary for proper operation of your video and your audio. However, something that I ran into after the initial upgrade to Windows 10 was stuttering and glitching audio and video. This was apparent in YouTube videos, uh, music, it didn't matter where you were playing it, be it on a web browser or a native uh, media player on Windows 10, like Media Player Classic, Media Player VLC, it didn't matter. You'd be watching a video or listening to an audio track, going about your business, and about every 5 to 10 seconds, you hear a very audible, noticeable stutter and glitch in both the audio and video. I did have it recorded on video at one point in time, actually this camcorder, but for one reason or the other I forgot about doing so and rewinded the tape on this camcorder and subsequently taped over it, so you'll just have to take my word for it. According to Tom's hardware and this one over here, Windows 10 version 1903, I believe that this was uh, yeah the May 2019 update, uh, according to this gentleman, is the pinnacle of neglect and contempt was reminiscent of Winamp circa 1999 running on a Pentium 133 with its CPU priority toggle set to low and the CPU being subjected to the rigors of IE rendering Yahoo over a 56k dial-up modem and I I definitely would not say that that's an that's an exaggeration that's a pretty fair representation and description of the problems I was having my attempting to troubleshoot the aforementioned audio stuttering and video glitching was met by problem after problem I did just about everything I could possibly and that included updating drivers configuring power manage management options adjusting settings in the BIOS, reconfiguring my audio properties to use different sample rates and bit depths, you name it, I tried it, and nothing worked. Up until I found this obscure post under a Lenovo, uh, somebody experiencing problems on a Lenovo laptop, person here described the problem and mentioned that the fix was to update the Intel rapid storage technology driver to the latest version. This was confirmed by running the freeware utility Latency Monitor. This is one of two Latency Monitor applications that I know of that people have used with great success to diagnose problems with what is called DPC Latency. The, the exact uh, specifics of what that is uh, are a little over my head, but it has something to do with the drivers interacting in a way that allow everything to work copacetically. And uh, let's just say that a driver conflict at least in now Windows 10, will cause great issues with latency and the audio being processed by the operating system and subsequently being delivered through the operating system to your speakers and uh, audio glitches making their way uh, into the audio stream. So just as a public service announcement for anybody who has a Latitude E6500 and wishes to upgrade to Windows 10, that is experiencing problems with dropouts or audio glitches. Definitely check your Intel rapid storage technology driver. Not too sure why it still indicates there may be a problem with the drivers on this machine. 
I haven't heard any audio glitches nor video problems uh, since upgrading that driver and yet latency monitor still indicates that there may be a problem from my research I believe that this refers to the legacy um, I believe PS2 uh, port driver for using like a legacy PS2 keyboard or mouse though I very well could be wrong as it's been a number of nights and days since I last researched that topic all of the original drivers that were installed from Dell on Windows 7 were replaced with generic equivalents from Microsoft and those were causing a number of compatibility issues and conflicts with performance on the computer so I actually had to download them and reinstall them over the generic drivers videos play flawlessly on Google Chrome on YouTube no more video stuttering no more audio glitches it's one thing I could certainly do without is the constant nagging to try the Windows 10 app alternative to the program I actually have installed and set to natively open the file it's a program for media player classic and yet it always nags me to try using groove music which is not what I want to use audio is thankfully devoid of glitches stutters pops and clicks now it is clear and crisp very loud as well Overall, I must say, i um, not impressed, but not disappointed with Windows 10. Definitely, uh, when it works, is a fairly decent operating system, much more, than, much more so than uh, Windows 8 ever was originally before the 8.1 update. But I'm really disliking the sort of forced, shoehorned amalgamation of the new PC settings app and the legacy control panel, because, for example, here I am, under system settings in the native Windows 10 settings app and there's limited options for uh, configuring the power options on this machine and then over here on the right you see related settings additional power settings then and only then if you click that we're greeted by the legacy options that allow us fine-tuned control and a sneaky setting under power options system settings define power buttons and what they do there's an option to either enable or disable fast startup which is said to improve boot up time from shutdown however when I shut the computer down I want it to fully shut down and not enter a sort of hybrid sleep hibernate state uh, where nothing really effectively resets unless I restart windows I want to know that I'm turning the machine off and everything is exited out and then when I turn it on it's a cold boot in every sense of the word and so there we are wrapping up this video my impressions are Windows 10 are generally positive although it's not without its glitches every now and again this search bar in the bottom left uh, just disappears and is left with blank taskbar space similar to that which is on the right side as well as the display driver acting up every now and again and causing the screen to flicker on and off as if you've disconnected the display cable probably a problem that's a result of running a Windows 7 64-bit driver in Windows 10 but there's really not much I can do about it being that it's totally out of support at this point uh, the chipset from Intel that is and Intel does not have Windows 10 drivers for the specific configuration that this machine came with on their website neither does Dell for that matter aside from that though everything does seem to be working fairly well the hard drive definitely can stand an upgrade being only 149 gigabytes and the RAM as well definitely do with an update so aside from those nagging and obscure issues that I happen to experience with Windows 10 uh, until figuring out said problems on my own after many days of frustration and searching I'm pretty, uh, pretty comfortable with the, the layout of Windows 10. They've now added a ribbon similar to that which was found in Office 2007 and I believe was native on Windows 8 or 8.1, but I never really spent much time running either of those two operating systems. Um, 
the majority of my time was spent on Windows 7. So it just goes to show you that you can teach an old dog, or in this case a computer, new tricks. Just might take some time and patience, as well as a little bit of frustration along the way.